Hello, what is Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome is a term that was coined in the 1970s following an unsuccessful siege of the Swedish bank Credit Banken in Stockholm, where two men kept three women and a man in the bank's vault for six days. The term describes the positive feelings that the captors had towards the perpetrators. Indeed, when they were rescued, they refused to testify against their captors and also raised money to fund their captors' legal defence fees. They also had negative feelings towards the police who rescued them. Stockholm Syndrome describes the psychological response of the captive who identifies with and empathises with the captor in their goals and demands. Stockholm Syndrome appears incongruous because the positive feelings that are engendered in the captive to their captor, which are the opposite of the fear and contempt that outsiders feel towards the captor. One of the captives at the Stockholm Bank spoke of being treated well by criminal Jan Herrick Olsen. He said, and I quote, when he treated us well, we could think of him as an emergency god. Stockholm Syndrome is a survival mechanism when a person is suddenly in fear of their life due to an aggressor. This fear changes to relief when the individual does not kill the victim. The victim first of all fears relief that they were not killed and then over the course of a few days they feel grateful towards their captor for in quote giving them their life. They may become submissive and childlike and not eat, drink or go to the toilet without the captor's permission. This compliance minimises the risk of harm to the victim. Small acts of kindness, for example food, engenders gratitude in the victim. Another theory is that the victim becomes grateful as a result of the perpetrator perpetuating fear without actually harming them. The hostages experience a primitive, powerful, positive feeling towards the captor. They are in denial that this is the person who's put them in the situation. In their mind, they think that the captor is going to let them live. As I said earlier, it takes only a few days for the captive to have a positive bond with the captor. The victim's desire for the survival is more important than hating the captor. And forced dependence ensues and the captives interpret small acts of kindness in the midst of an awful situation as good treatment. They become hypervigilant to the needs of the captors and associate the happiness of the captors with that of their own. The captives may not want to contact the police. They may also hesitate to turn in the captor. The most famous person who suffered from Stockholm Syndrome is Patty Hearst. She was the granddaughter of businessman and newspaper publisher William Randolph Hearst and was kidnapped in 1974 by the Symbionese Liberation Army. During her captivity, she renounced her family, changed her name and even helped the SLA in robbing banks. When arrested and tried in court, she used brainwashing as a defence in the trial and therefore she temporarily became an advocate for the radical ideology of her captors. The defence in her trial did not work and she was sentenced to 35 years in jail. The term Stockholm Syndrome was applied to Natasha Kampusch. When she was 10 years old, she was abducted by Wolfgang Prick Lopil. She was kept in a dark room in a basement for over eight years. During that time, Wolfgang beat her and threatened to kill her. However, occasionally he treated her kindly. Natasha was able to escape and Wolfgang committed suicide. The media reported that Natasha wept when she heard about Wolfgang's death. Three to four years after, Natasha escaped from the basement. In 2010, approximately four years after she escaped from the basement, Natasha said this to the Guardian newspaper. In quotes, I find it very natural that you would adapt yourself to identify with your kidnapper, she said especially if you spend a great deal of time with that person. It's about empathy, communication. Looking for normality within the framework of a crime is not a syndrome, it is a survival strategy. She rejected the label Stockholm Syndrome and said that it doesn't take into account the rational choices people make in particular situations. Terry Anderson, Terry Waite and Thomas Sutherland were kept hostage by Islamist militants in the late 1980s. They were kept in solitary confinement 
in small dirty cells between four and six years each. However, they said that they had been treated well by their captors. Although widely used in the media in hostage and kidnapping situations and also described in film and fiction, Stockholm Syndrome is rare. According to a study by the FBI, Stockholm Syndrome occurs in only 5% of hostage victims. There is no accepted definition nor widely accepted diagnostic criteria and it is not in DSM-5 or the World Health Organization's ICD-10. Research has been sparse and contradictory. The term is now used more widely than kidnappings and hostage situations and is used in child abuse, incest, domestic violence, sex trafficking, to political and religious oppression, prisoners of war and any abusive relationship. Other terms can be used for the, these relationships such as terror bonding and trauma bonding. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been interesting. I'm Dr Beth Colby, a psychiatrist in London. Goodbye for now.